and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Israelites, it's very important for you to understand that the truth is the light. Religious doctrines is not the way or the light. Religious doctrines purpose is to control you as well as to keep you in rebellion against the Most High. Israelites, it's very important that you allow the truth the Most High is making available at this time to penetrate your heart to transform you. I have said to you repeatedly, don't compare the truth with religious doctrines. I know that religion is all that most of you know. Outside of religion, most of you don't know how to seek the Most High for yourself. Before the awakening, everything you know about the Most High was taught to you by the disciples of Satan in religion. The very people who don't serve nor worship the God of Israel. Israelites, don't allow yourself to be deceived by Satan's ministers. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Outside of religion, many people are lost. They don't know how to connect with the Most High. A lot of people fail to realize that if you were in religion, you was lost from the start. Religion stride from their falsehoods. The disciples of Satan misled a lot of people. Religious leaders made a lot of people believe simple prayers are not heard. The disciples of Satan taught the people to put on a show. By doing this, their prayers will be heard. The Most High said in his words, when you pray, go to your closet or a private place where you won't be seen and make your petition known. Many people are led to believe they have to pray for hours as well as pray publicly to get the attention of the Most High. Israelites, this is why it's important at this time to allow the truth of the Most High's words to do the work in you. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut to thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. A lot of lies are fed to the people through religious doctrines. The awakening is happening to teach you how to serve the Most High the right way. The scriptures you just heard is in the authorized Bible. The people are taught to depend on their pastors or religious leaders to work out their salvation. Some people have never heard that scripture or they have heard the scripture but have no understanding. Closing your door and praying in secret will get the attention of the Most High if you're righteous. The Most High didn't say in the scriptures a large group of people need to come together in order to be heard. The word of the Most High instruct the people to come to him directly. When it comes to the Most High, it's a personal relationship. While religion make it seem as if your spiritual journey is a one size fits all. Everyone in religion must have one shared belief and at the same level. Israelites, the Most High have the ability to work with everyone individually. That is why you're the temple that house the spirit of the Most High. Know ye not? that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. We all are not going to be at the same place or level spiritually. What I know the Most High is probably teaching some of you right now on your personal relationship. Our spiritual journey is not going to be identical. The Most High is able to teach you as well as order your steps through the Holy Spirit that abide with you. A lot of you are used to false prophets and teachers ordering your steps. The time have come for you to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. 
It's the Holy Spirit that can tell you the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Too many Israelites and indigenous black people rely on religion to work out their salvation. If you listen to the gentle voice that abide with you, religion will become obsolete. The time have come for you to trust the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The Messiah prayed to the Father to send to us a comforter in his name. The comforter will bring all things to your remembrance. Your pastors and religious leaders are not the comforter the Messiah prayed to the Father to send to us to bring all things to our remembrance. That is why you need to get familiar with the Holy Spirit and trust the Holy Spirit guidance. Israelites, stop trying to reason in the flesh. You will never understand spiritual matters if you reason in the flesh. The carnal mind have no place in spiritual affairs. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. A lot of people have been deceived into praying in the name of the Messiah that came in his own name. The God they are praying to in religion is an idol that don't know if he's the son or the father or a Holy Ghost. Israelites, it's very important that you learn how to pray as well as know who you're praying to. Many of your prayers are not heard because the disciples of Satan taught you to pray to their idol gods. Some Israelites and indigenous black people are having a difficult time seeking the father for themselves. The Most High put his people in the position to teach them the truth. However, his people have to allow the Most High to become their teacher. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. Your teacher is the Most High through the Holy Spirit. A lot of you are deceived into believing the Most High through a Holy Ghost is teaching pastors in religion. The truth is, familiar spirits, disguised as the Holy Ghost, is teaching religious leaders. I would say this time after time, a ghost can't be holy. Ghosts hunt and scare people. Ghosts are not known to be holy. Also, a ghost is dead. When the Messiah rise, he overcame death. The Messiah is not dead to the people who believe the Holy Ghost is the Messiah. Remember, the Most High is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The Messiah is living. I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. How can a Holy Ghost have any association with the Most High? A lot of people are in error with this belief. You truly need to let the scriptures speak. The fallen angels are the gods worship in religion. The scripture in the book of Isaiah in the authorized Bible said the spiritual wickedness in high places made a covenant with hell. They hide behind their falsehoods and take refuge in their lies. I don't know how some Israelites continue to allow the teachings from the beast religion to determine their faith and how far they will seek the face of the most high. In addition, compare the truth to religious doctrines. Israelites, you should compare everything you hear from me to the words of the Most High and what the Holy Spirit said to you. Don't compare the truth to religious doctrines. It will only confuse you. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. The words of the Most High is the first place you should compare any beliefs about the Most High. Religious doctrines shouldn't be the standard, no held in high esteem. Let the Most High renew your mind with truth so that you can understand the world you live in. For the past few weeks, we have been reviewing end time prophecy. The Most High want his people to know the signs of the times as well as what to expect in the end time and eternity. Israelites, don't let the disciples of Satan determine your happily ever after with their fairy tales. The Most High want you to know the truth. You should be excited for the truth. Before I review the next prophecy about the bride of the lamb, I wanted everyone to be familiar with the Garden of Eden, paradise. For multiple generations, the disciples of Satan taught the world that they would spend eternity in heaven. The disciples of Satan have been deceiving the people for countless generations. 
It's extremely important for the people of the Most High to know where they will spend eternity. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. Israelites and Gentiles all over the world, the heavens is not where you will spend eternity. Paradise, the Garden of Eden, is where you will spend eternity. Don't let the Satans make you believe the Garden of Eden, Paradise, is not good enough for eternity. Nor should you let the Satans deceive you into accepting this earth as your final resting place in eternity. Israelites and Gentiles, don't trade your glory for less than. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. As we review end time prophecy, Israelites and Gentiles, let the scriptures speak. Don't overanalyze anything and wait for the Holy Spirit to help you with understanding. Israelites, stop trying to serve the Most High through a religious lens. Let religion and all of its doctrines go. So far, you learn at the great white throne, all the dead that didn't rise at the first resurrection before the millennial reign will rise to be judged. The great white throne is the final judgment against mankind and all of the most highest created creatures. At the great white throne, the Satans, the other species of mankind, and all of the indigenous black people who follow the Satans will be judged and cast into the lake of fire, the second death. All the people whose name is not written in the book of life. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The people whom the Messiah raised at the last day would not be a part of the great white throne judgment. These people are the righteous that will reign with the Messiah during the millennial reign. They are the people the scriptures in the authorized Bible in the book of Revelation said would not be affected by the second death. The second death won't have any power over them. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. While the great white throne judgment is taking place, the righteous will be in the promised land and the surrounding lands close to Jerusalem. After the great white throne judgment, the Israelites and all the righteous that are in Jerusalem and all the surrounding land will finally obtain access to paradise, the Garden of Eden. Although eternity started when the Messiah raised the righteous at his second coming, the righteous had to wait until the millennial reign was over and the other prophecies fulfilled before they could inherit the kingdom of the Most High. According to the scriptures in the book of Revelation, after death and hell was cast into the lake of fire, along with every person and created creature that was not found in the book of life, John said he saw a new heaven and a new earth. John went on to say that the earth we currently reside in, along with the first heaven, passed away. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. There are Israelites and Gentiles that believe eternity will be right here on this earth. I don't know who would want to spend eternity on this earth, especially when the Most High would destroy this earth. According to the scriptures, this earth we currently reside in will pass away, meaning it will be destroyed and gone. It will no longer exist. The scripture said the first heaven will go as well. If this earth and heaven pass away, how will you spend eternity on this earth or the heavens? The first heaven is where the large body of water that is greater than all the oceans on this earth is located, along with the storehouses that hold the snow, rain, and many other things. The clouds and stars are also in the first heaven. Where will you spend eternity? It came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him onto their wings and bore him up onto the first heaven and placed him on the clouds. And there I looked, and again I looked higher and saw the ether, and they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. 
They brought before my face the elders and rulers of the stellar orders and showed me 200 angels who rule the stars and their services to the heavens and fly with their wings and come around all those who sail. And here I looked down and saw the treasure houses of the snow and the angels who keep their terrible storehouses and the clouds whence they come out into which they go. They showed me the treasure houses of the dew like oil of the olive and the appearance of its form as of all the flowers of the earth. Further, many angels guarding the treasure houses of these things and how they are made to shut and open. As you heard, the book of Enoch revealed what is located in the first heaven. In eternity, there won't be a need for the stars to shine and give us light for the most high will be our light. Also, there's no darkness in eternity. The Most High used the storehouses as a weapon for war. There won't be any war in eternity. Therefore, he has no need for the storehouses. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? The first heaven that will pass away, according to the scriptures in the book of Revelation, consists of the sea that is greater than the sea here on earth will no longer exist. Israelites, there won't be a need for us to drink water. You heard in the scripture in the book of Revelation, there will be no more sea. The sea that is in the heavens will be obsolete as well. When our bodies change to its original state, there won't be a need for us to drink water. After Adam and Eve was removed from the Garden of Eden, Adam lamented about water and how they can't live without water in their current altered state. Adam went on to say that when he was in the garden, he saw the water, but he had no desire for it because his body had no use for it. And Adam said, after he was raised, O God, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water. But since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. Then God said to Adam, while thou was under my command and was a bright angel, thou knewest not this water. O Lord, when I was in the garden and saw the water that flowed from under the tree of life, my heart did not desire, neither did my body require to drink of it, neither did I know thirst, for I was living and above that which I am now. As you heard, Israelites, there won't be a need for the first heaven. That is why it will pass away. This earth is a prison for the seed of Adam. This earth is where the Most High sent everyone who's subject to Satan. This earth wasn't meant to be a resting place for us. I don't understand Israelites that want to debate about this earth being our final resting place. This earth is not our final resting place. I don't know why anyone would want to fight to live here forever. In addition to some Israelites believing this earth is our eternity, there are some Israelites who believe the Garden of Eden is in this earth. Some people believe the Garden is in the Middle East. Some say the Garden of Eden is in Sub-Saharan Africa. While some people believe the Garden of Eden is in Ethiopia. The locations mentioned are populated with people today and none of those people have ever seen the Garden of Eden. The people proclaiming the Garden of Eden is in a specific location on this earth are only speculating. According to the scripture, this earth will pass away. If the Garden of Eden is in this earth, that means the Garden of Eden will pass away as well. Listen to the scripture again. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Oh, Adam, look at that garden of joy and at this earth of toil. And behold the angels who are in the garden that is full of them, and see thyself alone on this earth with Satan whom thou didst obey. When the Most High sent the flood to the earth, it would have destroyed the Garden of Eden if it was on this earth. There's no scripture indicating the garden was destroyed by the flood or ever. The time have come for the indigenous black people to stop playing with the words of the Most High. The heathens are not afraid to alter and dilute the scriptures because the fear of the Most High is not in them. As the people made in the image of the Most High, we shouldn't follow after the heathens and alter the words of the Most High. When you speculate and spread falsehoods, you're no different from the heathens that alter the word. Please allow the truth to set the people free.
The truth is not for a debate. If you disagree, take it to the most high. The Garden of Eden is not on this earth. If it was on this earth, then it would pass away with the earth. The Most High promised Adam that he would give him and the righteous of his seed rest in the garden at the end of the world. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. Another reason some Israelites believe they will spend eternity in the heavens the scripture in the book of Revelation said that there was 12 gates with the Israelite tribes names written on them. Some people assume heaven because of the gates that are in heaven and the Messiah having the keys to the gates of heaven. Because the scriptures mention the gates, many people believe the false doctrine of spending eternity in heaven. Israelites, when it comes to the words of the Most High, you can't assume anything. You must be accurate about everything. Assuming things can cost many people their lives. You who speculate will have the blood of the people you deceive by assuming on your hands. Israelites, instead of assuming, ask the Most High to give you understanding of his words. Some Israelites assume the Garden of Eden don't have any gates. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. Israelites, the scriptures in the authorized Bible may limit the information about the Garden of Eden. However, there are countless other books that was removed from the scriptures that can reveal what the authorized Bible don't. The truth of the Most High's words can be found in other books. Just make sure the books you read are books the Holy Spirit led you to. When Adam and Eve was being escorted out of the Garden of Eden, the scriptures revealed that when they arrived to the end of the garden, they exit through a gate. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones, large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them, and they were as dead. Because whereas they had hitherto been in the garden land, beautifully planted with all manners of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land, which they knew not and had never seen. When Adam and Eve exit the garden by going through a gate, they were led to this earth, which indicate this earth and the garden of Eden are very close to each other. The scripture said the holy mountain Noah and our fathers before the flood dwell was only 15 spiritual cubits from the garden. The holy mountain our ancestors in those days dwell was below the garden of Eden. From the holy mountain, they could see the garden. Israelites, you cannot use the carnal mind to understand spiritual things. Anything is possible with the Most High. Just because your mind cannot comprehend how Adam and Eve walked out of the garden to this earth, it doesn't mean it's impossible. Look at it in this perspective. Every time you sleep, your body lays in the bed or wherever you lay down to sleep. Your spirit, the real you, don't sleep. It roams the spirit realm. The spirit realm is a parallel world to this earth. Your dream life show you a glimpse into the spirit realm. There are countless other realms the Most High created that you and I don't know about. The B system refer to those other realms as dimensions. Israelites, there are countless other dimensions. The Most High spoke to Enoch about his endless realms. And I bow down to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me, Enoch, beloved, all thou seest, all things that are standing finished, I tell to thee, even before the very beginning, all that I created from none being, and visible things from invisible. Hear, Enoch, and take in these my words, for not to my angels have I told my secret, and I have not told them their rise, nor my endless realm nor have they understood my creating, which I tell thee today. I truly believe the heathens renamed the other realms as heaven to deceive us. 
As you heard, the Most High said he didn't even tell his angels about the countless other realms. Israelites, don't limit the power of the Most High to what you can see. There is a lot more that you cannot see. Before the fall of Adam and Eve, they had the ability to see into the heavens. And Adam said to Eve, look at thine eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels in heaven, praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become of flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. Then God the Lord said unto Adam, When thou was under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee. And for that reason couldest thou see things afar off. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee. And it was not left to thee to see things afar off but only near at hand after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. As you heard, Israelites, the eyes of the flesh Adam and Eve now had cannot see far off like they did before. As their children, we inherited the same eyes of the flesh. This is why we must elevate to be able to see the things that are in front of us with our spiritual eyes. The only way to see these things is in the spirit realm. There's nothing too hard for the Most High. Everything is possible with the Most High. When Adam and Eve tried to re-enter the garden after the Most High used Michael to escort them out of the garden, the Most High put a cherub to guard the Garden of Eden. The Most High gave the cherub instructions concerning Adam and Eve if they tried to enter the garden. The Most High commanded the cherub to put them to death. The scripture revealed that the cherub was at the western gate when he saw Adam and Eve approaching the garden. And the cherub who guarded the garden was standing at the western gate and guarding it against Adam and Eve, lest they should suddenly come into the garden. And the cherub turned around as if to put them to death, according to the commandment God had given him. And again, when Adam was by the gate of the garden and saw the cherub with a sword of flashing fire in his hand, And the cherub grew angry and frowned at him. Both Adam and Eve became afraid of him and thought he meant to put them to death. So they fell on their faces and trembled with fear. But he had pity on them and showed them mercy. And turning from them, went up to heaven and prayed unto the Lord and said, Lord, thou didst send me to watch at the gate of the garden with a sword of fire. The scripture you just heard revealed the Garden of Eden had a western gate. If the Garden of Eden had a western gate, that would indicate it had a northern, southern, and eastern gate as well. Just as we read in the scriptures in the book of Revelation that describe the gates in New Jerusalem, there was three gates on the western side, three gates on the eastern side, three gates on the northern side and three gates on the southern side with the names of the tribes of Israel written on them. Israelites, the authorized Bible disguised the Garden of Eden as heaven or New Jerusalem in some scriptures. The Holy Spirit has to open your eyes to see which scripture is talking about the Garden of Eden. The Bible may not indirectly mention the Garden of Eden having gates. However, The book the Holy Spirit led me to revealed this to be true. Israelites, before you speculate, get the information. Before you reject knowledge, ask the Most High to give you understanding. The time have come for the people of the Most High to stop perishing from a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Israelites, give the truth a fair chance to transform your mind. The righteous should celebrate the truth. I hope this truth is clearing up any confusion some Israelites had about the Garden of Eden. So far you heard after the great white throne judgment, the first heaven and the earth will pass away and there will be no more sea. John, who was given the opportunity to see everything in the spirit realm, revealed to us in the book of Revelation that he saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
Remember I said to you that the authorized Bible indirectly talks about the Garden of Eden. The workers of iniquity hide the garden as New Jerusalem or heaven to get many people to believe in the rapture doctrine and spending eternity in the heaven. The scripture you just heard should debunk spending eternity in the heaven doctrine. The scripture said New Jerusalem is coming down from heaven. How will you spend eternity in heaven if New Jerusalem is coming down out of heaven? Israelites and Gentiles, it's very important to allow the scriptures to speak. In countless messages I did about the Garden of Eden, I said to you that the Garden of Eden was located in the third heaven. The book of Enoch and Paul confirmed this to be true. And those men took me thence and led me up onto the third heaven and placed me there. And I looked downwards and sensed the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all the sweet flowering trees and beheld their fruits, which were sweet smelling and all the foods borne by them bubbling with fragrant exhalation. And in the midst of the trees that of life and that place whereon the Lord rests, when he goes up into paradise, and this tree is of ineffable goodness and fragrance and adorned more than every existing thing. And on all sides, it is in form gold looking and vermilion and fire like and covers all and it has produced from all fruits. Its roots is in the garden at the earth's end and paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk, and their springs send forth oil and wine, and they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course and go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And thence they go forth along the earth and have a revolution to their circle, even as other elements. And here there is no unfruitful tree and every place is blessed. And there are 300 angels, very bright, who keep the garden and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. The Garden of Eden, we all know, is populated with all sorts of fragrant trees. The scriptures reveal the garden to be in the third heaven, which is why the Garden of Eden will come down from heaven. If the garden wasn't in the heavens, why would the Most High bring New Jerusalem down from heaven? New Jerusalem is how the heathens disguise the Garden of Eden, paradise in the authorized Bible. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. The scriptures describe New Jerusalem as the bride, the lamb's wife. New Jerusalem or the Garden of Eden is the Messiah's kingdom. Remember the Messiah said his kingdom is not of this world. New Jerusalem that is described as the lamb's bride is not of this world. It's coming down from heaven from the most high to the righteous. I know some of you are probably saying, here she go again. New Jerusalem is not the Garden of Eden. The book of Revelation gave us a detailed description of New Jerusalem. In chapter 22 in the book of Revelation, John was shown a pure river of water of life. This river flowed from the throne of the Most High. The scripture said in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river that flowed from the throne of the Most High was the tree of life. The leaves on the tree of life was healing for the nations. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner fruits, 
and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Everyone should know by now that the tree of life is in the Garden of Eden. The authorized Bible described the tree of life to be in New Jerusalem, near the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb. So many doctrines can be debunked with that one scripture. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Did you notice the scripture said the throne of God? And let me emphasize on and of the Lamb. There's too many people believing in the Trinity doctrine. The son is not the father and the father is not the son. The tree of life is near the throne of the most high in New Jerusalem. This is the authorized Bible account of what John saw in the spirit realm that is described in the book of Revelation. If we go back to the book of Genesis, in the beginning, when the most high was creating everything, when the most high created the man, Adam, and put him in the garden, Chapter 2 in the book of Genesis said the tree of life is in the midst of the garden. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The book of Genesis said the tree of life was in the garden of Eden. The book of Revelation said in the new Jerusalem that will come down from heaven, the tree of life was near the throne of the most high and of the lamb. The tree of life leaves will serve as food for the righteous in eternity. Remember, spiritual food is not the same as earthly food. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of of the paradise of God. Chapter 2, verse 7 in the book of Revelation said, The Most High will give them to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. As you can see, Israelites, New Jerusalem is the Garden of Eden. Instead of saying the Garden or Paradise, the Garden of Eden is changed to New Jerusalem in the scripture in the book of Revelation. Changing the name is how the workers of iniquity conceal the truth, as well as change the narrative. Israelites, don't be disappointed with the Garden of Eden being our final resting place in eternity. I know many of you was led to believe heaven is where you will spend eternity. The doctrine of us going to heaven is a false doctrine, along with countless other doctrines the beast religion used to deceive the masses. The Garden of Eden is a magnificent place. We all should strive to find rest there. The time have come for you to know the truth about our true home. We must stop allowing ourselves to be deceived by the doctrines of devils from religion. Paradise is beyond what you and I could ever imagine. Adam and Eve wept every time they saw the garden and they couldn't enter. They did everything that they could to make sure the righteous of their children could dwell in paradise in eternity. And Adam and Eve went from before the gate of the garden to the southern side of it and found there the water that watered the garden from the root of the tree of life and that parted itself from thence into four rivers over the earth. Then they came and draw near to that water and looked at it and saw that it was the water that came forth from under the root of the tree of life in the garden. And Adam wept and wailed and smote upon his breast for being severed from the garden and said to Eve, Why hast thou brought upon me, upon thyself, and upon our seed, so many of these plagues and punishments? And Eve said unto him, What is thou hast seen to weep and to speak to me in this wise? And he said to Eve, Seest thou not this water that was with us in the garden? that watered the trees of the garden and flowed out thence. Israelites, did you notice in the scriptures you just heard said the water that come from the garden that split into four rivers that flow into the earth. The water flow is over the earth. This would indicate the garden is above this earth and not in this earth. Keep in mind, Israelites, the four rivers are not man-made. There are a lot of lakes, rivers, and water holes that are man-made. 
Adam was able to see the water that flowed from the tree of life from where he and Eve were staying. When Adam saw the tree of life and the water that flowed from it, Adam was hurt. The scripture said the water flowed from the tree of life into four rivers over the earth, which confirmed what was written in the book of Genesis chapter 2. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pisan, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, there is Delium, and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gion, the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidikel, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man, and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it, and to keep it. Some people, when they see that the water that flow from the garden into the earth is located in the modern nations of today, they automatically believe the Garden of Eden is located in that region. You have to remember the workers of iniquity changed names and distorted the maps of this world. Also, the water that flow from the Garden of Eden flowed into this earth. If it's coming to this earth, that means the source is not in this earth. Just because you heard Assyria, Ethiopia, and Euphrates, it doesn't mean the garden is in those regions. If the garden was in Ethiopia and Assyria, everyone should be able to see the garden. There wouldn't be any controversy about the location of the Garden of Eden. Israelites, a very important detail I want to share to help you understand the scriptures. Majority of what you are reading are dreams and visions the prophets of old had. Everything they are describing in their revelation are things the Most High allow them to see in the spirit realm. It's important for you to know that the language of the spirit realm are symbols. A house in the spirit realm doesn't have the same meaning with a house in the physical realm. For example, the first beast that is coming out of the sea with 10 horns in the book of Revelation symbolizes kingdoms and kings that will rise in the earth. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and 10 horns, and upon his horns, 10 crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. John saw a beast that came out of the sea that revealed the Antichrist in his kingdom. The ten horns represented ten kings on this earth. In the spirit realm, the beast with horns and crowns symbolizes kings and kingdoms. In the physical realm, an animal coming out of the sea with ten horns don't symbolize kings that will rise on the earth. It would have a different meaning. Most people would run in fear if they saw a beast with 10 horns coming out of the sea. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. And the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. With a carnal mind and reasoning in the flesh, a beast coming out of the sea would be scary. Everyone would be running for their life with fear. Such a sight is impossible in the flesh. John saw the beast with ten horns and Daniel revealed to us what those ten horns represented along with the beast. In the spirit realm, the symbols have a total different interpretation to our reality in the flesh. Israelites, that is why we cannot reason in the flesh, nor use the mind of the flesh to decode what is spiritual. To learn more about dream symbols, watch the Spirit Realm series on this channel. I hope this segment and our review of end time prophecy have helped you understand end time prophecy a little bit more, as well as clear up any confusion some of you may have concerning where the righteous will spend eternity. The doctrines of devils need to be exposed. The truth of the Most High's words will expose the demonic doctrines. Israelites, stay tuned to the next chapter in decoding end time prophecy with truth. It's the truth that will make us free. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, 
tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful <laughs>